We will continue our lessons about Unit 5, which is talk about the atomic physics. And we took lessons before in the school, and now we will continue in our lessons. So atomic physics, about this unit, it talks about the structure of the atom. And the structure of the atom starts by many scientists before they explain what the atom consists of from inside. So we took before many uh, theories talking about this structure of atom, okay? So the theories we took it before was all theories, but now we will continue in other lessons in the same unit. So atomic physics, now we have the excitation of the chemical elements, excitation of chemical elements. Chemical elements can be excited, and what we mean by excitation, we mean the process before the ionization. So we have two processes. Number one, we call it ionization, which is the separation of the atoms into free electrons and positive ions. But now we will talk about the excitation of chemical elements. So how we can do this excitation? We have three ways. Number one, by electronic shock. And this way, the atom will be stable atom, we will shoot it by electron moving with a very high kinetic energy. It will separate the atom into free electrons and positive ions. Number two is not too much different from number one, which is by radiation absorption. So when the atom absorbs radiation, the electrons jump from lower levels to higher levels. And this is called what? excitation also okay number three it will be by heating and this is the easiest way in what in excitation of chemical elements just take any amount of the chemical elements and put it under what under heat and you will find that the atom will be excited that means some electrons will jump to higher levels and this is the meaning of what of excitation Okay, now to understand the meaning of excitation properly, we will define it here into many points. So the excitation of atoms, when the stable atom absorbs energy, as we said before, this energy can be any one of the three ways we explained it before. It can be by electronic shock, which is here high kinetic energy, or by heating, or by radiation. Anywhere when the stable atom absorbs energy, some of their electrons transfer from lower energy level to high energy level. So now this is the meaning of excitation. In this point, those electrons get excited, the electrons will come back to their original levels spontaneously. And what we mean by spontaneously, that means by themselves, without any external force. So we took them to higher levels, now they will come back spontaneously. Point number three, in this case, the atom emits the absorbed energy as radiation called spectrum. That means here, when the electron coming back from higher level to lower level, it has to give the same energy absorbed before. And now this energy given out as a spectrum. Okay? A spectrum here means what? Collection of radiations together. So now we need to see what's the meaning of a spectrum. And I think these three points explaining the excitation process of atoms very well. The atomic spectrum, this is the last point we stopped last time, the atomic spectrum, it is visible and invisible radiation. That means the radiation can be visible so we can see it, or it can be invisible, we cannot see it by the human eye. So the definition of atomic spectrum, it is visible and invisible radiation 
of different wavelengths. That means not all the radiations having the same wavelengths. The wavelength and the frequency also will be what different. Emit from excited atoms when they come back to the stable state. As we explained before, when the excitation process happens, the electrons will jump from lower levels to higher levels. Now they want to come back. They will give energy out. We said this energy will be given out as atomic spectrum. The atomic spectrum consists of two parts, visible and invisible, as we are going to see later on. So this visible and invisible radiations, they have different wavelengths and different frequencies. Okay? So we have two types of spectrum. Continuous spectrum and this kind of spectrum, it is a spectrum of light source such as sun. When the sun gives us light, this light consists of many, many radiations. That means in a continuous way. So the definition of this spectrum is contains a large number of wavelengths in a continuous way. That means there is no missing parts. All the radiations are there in what? In continuous spectrum. In the other hand, we have the line spectrum. And the line spectrum is con completely different from the continuous spectrum. Different in what exactly? The line spectrum, a spectrum of chemical elements. Chemical elements such as hydrogen or um, mercury or sodium or any other chemical elements when they get excited and the atom want to come back to the stable state it will emit radiation or spectrum called line spectrum so why we call it line spectrum because this kind of spectrum now contains a limited number of wavelengths what does it mean this limited number of wavelengths that means not like this one it means it has some wavelengths are not included. They will be completely missing from the spectrum. Okay? And actually, in this case, let us go back and compare between the two types again. Continuous spectrum given by source of lights like the sun sun can give us all the radiations in in in, in completely uh, in a continuous way that means nothing will be missing in the middle when on the other hand the line spectrum gives just what limited number of radiations also here this needs a source of light like the sun when this needs just what excited chemical elements so the difference is very clear between the two sides of continuous or line spectrum okay now in this continuous spectrum we have two parts visible part and this we call it minor part why we call it minor part because this is a small part of the whole spectrum and this contains the seven colors of rainbow colors which are starting by red finished by violet so we have seven colors starting by red finished by violet all of them called what visible so this is the light we can see as colors in the other hand we have invisible part what I mean by invisible, that means we cannot see it by our human eyes. And this part we call it major part. It contains all other radiations. That means the whole spectrum take the light out, the rest of the radiations called what? Invisible radiations or invisible spectrum. So that means visible is minor and invisible is major part. So the spectrum now, 
as a continuous spectrum contains all these radiations starting by radio waves these are the waves people use it in telecommunications like cell phones like uh, radars okay many kind of what telecommunications microwaves these waves having higher frequency than the radio waves and from the name you can see we have the the picture of what of the microwave as people use it at home and it has some heat properties that means it can produce heat more than radio waves then we have infrared radiation this radiation having more heat properties than the microwaves so we have one two three kind of radiations coming before the visible light and all of them are invisible what are they again radio waves microwaves infrared and when i divide them like this this doesn't mean that we have end for the radio waves no they are joining each other that means the radio waves coming inside the microwaves and the microwaves also having part inside the radio waves like this so we don't have a partition we don't have a specific partition for each one of them then infrared also coming directly when we transfer in wavelengths and in frequency the frequency of infrared more than the frequency of microwaves and it has more heat properties all of them one two three they are invisible then we have the visible light visible light which is consists of the seven rainbow colors you can see starting by red finish by violet that's why the part before the light we call it infrared it means before red the part coming after light we call it ultraviolet that means more than violet so where is the limits of the colors red and violet red and violet before red infrared after violet ultraviolet between them we have the visible light then after this we will continue with more of the frequencies is we have x-ray x-ray having frequency more than ultraviolet and when the frequency increase the energy of the radiation also increase then we have the last one which is gamma rays and this having the highest frequency in the whole spectrum so again i have one two three radiations before the visible light and all of them are invisible and I have another one, two, three radiations after the light or the visible light. And also they are all invisible. That's why we said visible, we call it minor. That means it's just a small part of the spectrum. When the other side, which is called major part, having all other radiations. What I mean by all? Three from here and three from here. So that means six radiations laying on the part of what invisible radiation or invisible light when only the light which is visible we call it what colors starting by red finish by violet i think now this is the whole idea about the continuous spectrum nothing is missing they are all coming one after the other okay let's go back a little bit and make comparing again between the continuous spectrum and the line spectrum continuous spectrum of light given by source of light like the sun line spectrum given by chemical elements like hydrogen or mercury or sodium or any other elements continuous spectrum having large number of wavelength as we saw in the picture before all of them called what continuous spectrum when in the line spectrum we have limited number of wavelengths what i mean by limited number of wavelengths that means not all the radiations are available in what in the line spectrum just part of them where is the other part the other part will be absorbed or not emitted absorbed by chemical elements when they get excited or they cannot emit it because they didn't absorb it before 
So the chemical elements always give the same kind of radiation, absorb it, give it out as emitted again. So in this case, continuous spectrum again having two parts, visible and invisible. Visible, we said colors, seven colors. Invisible, we said all other parts. According to this diagram again or this picture, we can see three of them before the visible light and three of them after the visible light. And after this, in the next part of the lesson, we will see uh, how we can divide the continuous or the line spectrum into many other parts. Until here, till the next lesson, inshallah, we will see what will happen and we will take more explanation about the continuous spectrum and the line spectrum.